Okay, so now we're going to find the radius of the nucleus using a different method, high energy electron diffraction. As you know, diffraction is a wave property, but an electron can behave as a, as a wave. But we need to figure out its wavelength first. So first, we're going to accelerate the electron to really high speed. That's why it's called high energy. So we're using two 420 mega volts, which is going to accelerate to, uh, the electron to a speed near the speed of light. And we're going to work out the wavelength of the electron at this um, speed. So we'll have to use De Broglie's equation. Wavelength equals Planck's constant over uh, the momentum. And here are all the constants that we'll need. Okay, but because it's going so fast, instead of using V for velocity, I'm going to use C, which is the speed of light. Now, this means I can use this equation, E equals mc squared, Einstein's famous equation. The reason why I have to use this equation instead of half mv squared for the energy of the electron is because half mv squared doesn't work at really high speeds. So using this equ equation, I'm going to rearrange, I'm going to divide both sides by an E, oh, sorry, a C, divided by C, so I get E equals, E over C equals mc, and I'm going to put this, replace this mc over here with that um, E over C. So I get something that, that, that looks like this, and just put that in order, I've got this. So now I need to work out the energy of this electron. So the electron was initially at rest over here, and it's been accelerated by the 420 megavolts of energy. So as you know, potential differences work uh, done per unit charge. So if I multiply the potential difference by the charge, I get the energy. So the energy here, if I work it out, is the charge of the electron times the potential difference. So we've got 420 mega electron volts, I'm times in by 10 to the 6 to turn into volts, and then multiply by the charge of electron, I've got the energy now. I'm going to put it back into this equation here. So if I put it into that equation, um, with all the numbers, Planck's constant speed of light, I get a wavelength of 2.96 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. So in other words, 2.96 femtometers. Now I can study how it's going to diffract. So here is the apparatus I'm using for my high energy electron diffraction. These filaments over here will release electrons when they're heated and they're going to get accelerated between the cathode and the anode to the, um, to the wavelength that we calculated in the last part. And now the electron is going through and it's going to go through this thin metal sample over here. And as you can see, you get on the phosphorus screen, you get a pattern form diffraction rings. Uh, that look a bit like this. Okay, so why is it formed with diffraction rings? Because when it goes through the metal uh, sample, you've got the metal nuclei like this arranged in a thin layer, it's going to diffract. So imagine the wave, the electron wave going through and diffracting, just like a diffraction grating. And then it's going to superpose with itself and it's going to form the pattern on the screen. Okay, so we've got the exact same setup over here. We've got the electron beam going through a thin sample and, and uh, forming a diffraction pattern. Then instead of a phosphorus screen, I've got a detector, which I'm going to move at different angles. And when I record the reading on the detector, I find that I get a maximum in the center, of course, caused by constructive interference. And then I get a minimum here. And I'm going to record the angle at which I get the first minimum. The reason is it turns out you can work, use this to figure out the radius of the nucleus. The radius of the nucleus times sine of the mid angle at which you get the minimum gives you equal to 0 0.61 times a wavelength. So in our previous setup, we had electrons with moving at an energy of 420 mega electron volts. In other words, they've been accelerated through 420 mega volts. Um, and now, we, so we already calculate the wavelength of this actually. So we know it's going to diffract with a wavelength of 2.96 times to the minus. 15 meters. So we've got the wavelength, and it turns out here the minimum angle at the angle at which you get the minimum reading is 44 degrees. So I just have to simply rearrange for R and put the numbers in, and it turns out that the radius of the nucleus that the, of the metal sample here is 2.6 times 10 to the minus 15, which is just 2.6 femtometers.